Hey, I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we're going to be reviewing Tad Williams' Tail Chasers song, which is all about cats. That's why Pretty Miss Kitty wanted to be in the video. Can you not tell how much she wants to be in this video? It's like, it's like she's dying to be in the video. It's like she, she, it's like she's just... Okay, maybe she doesn't want to be in the video. We'll put her up here. We'll put her up here. We'll let her sniff the Motley Crew Funko Pops. And then, you know, she'll probably destroy the set. Tad Williams, Tell Chaser Song. This was Tad Williams' first book he ever wrote. 1985. Yeah, there you go. It's about cats. Everything about cats. You know, we're going to talk about the covers. This is his, this is the first edition. I got the first edition hardcover here. You know, and we always talk when we talk about Tad Williams. I got, I, I, he's one of my best friends in the business. He's signed all of my books. What does this one say? <laughs> this one says cats that I had. This is a story about cats that I had. Nothing better to write about. I guess I had a boring life. <laughs> hey, it's all right, man. It's all right. Oh, so the cover of this one, the cover of this book, this this book here, the mass market paperback, was painted by Brawled Brawls. That's a that's a great little cover there. I love it. It's got all of our little characters here, all the little demon cats in the background, demon cats in the background, right? And then our, our hero cats in the foreground. This cover was done by an aw, uh, an, aw, an illustrator named Michael Embden. Michael Embden also got, you know, cats. It's also about cats. I like both colors. You know, if I was to choose my favorite of the two, I might go with the Brawled Brawls one just because it's more colorful. Eh, you know. We always, we always do, you know, Daw Books always does great covers. And this was a Daw book. And if you want to, if you want a, a little history lesson on how this book got published, if you, if you YouTube, I've got a video on YouTube where it's me and Tad Williams in Salt Lake City Comic Con. So just type in, um, my name, Brian Lee Durfee, uh, and then type in literary agents. You'll probably get to the video. Maybe I'll leave a link. I don't know if I'll leave a link. In case I don't leave a link, just type in my name, Tad Williams, and literary agents, and you will get the video. And it's and it's got a great story of how Tad Williams got this published. It was his very first book, and there's a, and he tells in that in that Comic Con panel that me and Tad Williams do together. He tells a great story of how, as a young writer, he got this published. So if you want to watch that. Not only that, not only that, but Tad Williams is one of my favorite guys and one of my best friends in the business. And he did me a solid by blurbing my second book. You can see right there. So yeah, the guy, the guy's a writer. The guy is one of my heroes. He's one of the people. I mean, he wrote, he wrote the Dragon Bone Chair, Stone of Farewell to Green Edge. He wrote the Other Land series. Tad Williams has written some of the greatest science fiction fantasy novels of all time. He's one of my literary heroes. To have him give me the blurb, and indulge me, folks, indulge me. You know I always name drop. You know I always name drop. And I'll, and I'll name drop twice. I'll name drop. I'll name drop throughout this video a bunch of times. What is this about? You know me. Oh, so you know me. You know me. And my history of novels featuring talking animals. If you want to see how frustrated I get reading books about talking animals, just go watch my review of Watership Down or my review of Red Wall, and you will see one frustrated fat man, me being the frustrated fat man, going, talking animals? What the f*** is going on? these books with the talking animals. In Redwall, I didn't get it because the scale was off. I couldn't figure out if the talking animals were teeny 
and they were living in a human where that where the, the scale the scale of the castles and the wagons and the horses it was all wonky i couldn't figure it out so i just i just and then in um and then in watership down it wasn't the scale was okay the scale was fine it was just in watership down the rabbits were speaking like half the time they were speaking english and then the other half the time they were speaking rabbit language and it was confusing me it was straight confusing me I didn't get it. I was frustrated. I was just like, oh, why do I read? Why do I continue to read books that have talking animals? Because I can't get around it. I don't know whether the animals are tiny and the people are real sized. If the wagons are human sized or if they're little tiny wagons that the mice are ready. I just was like, I mean, I don't do it. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting myself worked up again. I'm getting myself worked up again. This, this isn't going to make any sense to anybody that hasn't watched my Red Wall review or my Watership Down review. So pause this right now. Type in Brian Lee Durfee Red Wall or Brian Lee Durfee Watership Down. Go watch these reviews if you want to see. I just, they frustrate me. They frustrate me. I, I'm like, are, you just, are, they, are they little animals? Or, 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 or is it all just humans cosplaying as animals? Is it furry? Is, it, this is, is this all furry? Is this all furry fetish porn? I don't know. I don't know what it is. So now I got to review Tail Chaser Song by Tad Williams, one of my favorite people, one of my good friends in the business. And I'm like, he's writing a, a book about talking animals. How am I going to, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do it? Okay. So Tad Williams's universe, his cat universe, he lays it out. I mean, let's, what, what is it about? What is it about? I mean, this book, Tail Chaser Song, first of all, let's just read what Cat Fan let's read what Cat Fancy magazine had to say about this. Williams' understanding of the nuances of feline behavior and psychology, as well as his riveting storytelling and memorable characters, make this book a classic of its genre. That's what Cat Fancy had to say. What did some other people have to say? San, the, San Diego, the San Diego Union had to say, for anyone who loves and understands cats, this is a fantasy of epic proportions. Oh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's great. I mean, I really enjoyed this book significantly more than I enjoyed Redwall and a lot more than I enjoyed Watership Down because Tad Williams, quite frankly, does a better job of building his the world that the cats are living in and the mythology that the cats follow. And that'll make sense as I, as I go on with this review. So what's the book about? Well, let's just read the back here. Meet Tail Chaser, a ginger tomcat of rare courage and curiosity. A born survival in a world of heroes and villains. Of powerful feline gods and whiskery legends, of, and whiskery legends about those strange, furless, erect creatures called man. Join Tail Chaser on his magical quest to rescue his cat girlfriend Hushpad. A quest that will take him all the way to cat hell and beyond. I like this book because it sets up in the very prologue. In the very, very prologue. And we're not supposed to like prologues in fantasy books, but this prologue is only a couple pages and it sets up our very cleverly sets up our evil cat lord, sort of our Sauron of cats, our Darth Vader of cats, our Voldemort of cats. Right at the beginning, right in the prologue. It just says, hey, hey, this it sets up very peculiar. Hey, there's a there's an evil cat in the prologue. And it's got like he's got a mythology around him and it's like a history around him, and he's gonna destroy the world, much like Sauron who would destroyed Middle Earth. It's like, right away, right away we're in a, we know we're in a magical realm where things just aren't really normal. They're not based in reality. It's based in cat mythology. And he builds this wonderful cat mythology in that prologue that we can follow. And one of the things that I like that Tad Williams himself said in this book is, you know, he's like, um, he said, um, it took me a long time to understand the cat slash human bargain. The dog slash human bargain was always pretty obvious. 
Human feeds and shelters dog. Dog worships human. Repeat daily. The cat thing, however, was a bit more oblique. As far as I ca could tell, it seemed to go something like this. Human feeds cat. Cat looks at human as though cat has never seen human before. Repeat daily. Thus, I suppose it's understandable that I began to think that cats to think about cats and how they think, and after a while, how they might see the world. It became a sort of private game, inventing cat mythologies, cat folklore, clever little cat in-jokes. And for the first couple of years that I lived as a human being domesticated by cats, it pretty much stayed that way, just a bit of mental knitting with in which to amuse myself. So he really started noodling with this book and just a, just with a little cat folklore, little cat in jokes, things like that. And then it started, you know, morphed into a full novel, you know. Um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's a great thing. I mean, this is, I, I like this one better than The Red Wall. I like this one better than uh, Watership Down. It's about cat mythology and Tail Chaser, our main guy, our main cat, our main little orange cat who's on the front, his, his girlfriend, Hushpad, has gone missing. So now he's got a quest. And at the end of this quest, as in all magical and mythical fantasy quests, there's an evil lord. An evil cat lord that he's got to fight. So that's kind of the basis of it. Now, like just like Watership Down... The cats tend to speak English most of the time. Like, you know, it opens up with, with Tail Chaser on, on a rooftop. And it's just called a rooftop. Yet, other things within this novel, just the same as Water that Ship Down, other things within the novel, they don't have English names like rooftop, you know. Like, the mice are called squeakers. The, f the female cats are called felas. Um, there's a lot of different things like that. But I mean, let's 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 face it. That's that's done for the charm, and I understood in Watership Down it was done just for the charm of rabbit mythology. In Tell Chaser's song, a lot of these extra words, these made up words like fila, squeaker, different things like dogs are named different things, and and, and everything has kind of got a different name that the cats call it. It all fits within the mythology. Maybe I'm just starting to appreciate talking animal books a lot more now than when I first read Red, Red Wall and I was just like bonked in the side of the head with a lot of weird stuff that I didn't quite get. Now I'm starting to settle into talking animal books a little more, I think. So I liked Tail Chaser song. I liked Tail Chaser's quest. And there's a lot of just great interludes of Cat World mythology built into this that really sort of makes you feel like you're not really in our world following cats as they dodge cars and run under fences and climb on rooftops you're in more of like a mythological lord of the rings type cat world here um and i guess maybe that's the way watership down was too and certainly that's that's definitely the way redwall is but tail chaser song follows our guy tail chaser on a very whimsical quest to find Hushpad, and he, he meets lots of dark and dangerous little creatures in the woods. Yeah, it's a delightful little tale. First novel of Tad Williams' Tale Chaser song. Oh, it's, I mean, it ain't, it ain't no memory, sorrow, and thorn. It ain't no other land. It ain't no shadow march. That's for sure. But it's certainly a delightful little tale about cats that I quite enjoyed. I'm going to give it a good 7.5 out of 10. You know, me, me and talking animal books. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, folks. It's hard. But I'm beginning to start to like them.